Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently about 10 after five and it is cool in Indianapolis. I wouldn't say it's warm. It's warmer, you know, it's one of the warmer days that we've had. I looked on the uh, weather app when I got up today and it was like low 50s. I think it was like 52 or something like that. So it was a little bit nicer today. It's been sunny outside all day today, just a few clouds, but it's been mostly sunny. Um, but definitely not like warm, like it's not short weather or anything like that. <laughs> um, but a little bit nicer. I actually filmed my drama video out here earlier and I just had my hoodie on and then I filmed a Peterisms video and before I filmed my Peterisms video, I was talking to my neighbor across the street and it was like starting to get windy and it's a little chilly out here. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna put my coat on. So I put on my light jacket to sit out here and vlog. And uh, I just thought that I would come and talk to you guys for a little bit before my exciting night of true crime. I'm very excited about uh, tonight. So I'm filming all my videos outside. Well, I guess this is one thing I do need to say. <laughs> I feel like this is the video that I keep on promising um, is to do the PO unboxing all the stuff It's like literally taking up like Half of our kitchen counter and I have all this stuff up there I was actually like looking at it before I came out here. I was like, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to make this video If I don't make it tomorrow, it won't be made till Monday <clears throat> So I was like I should probably move this someplace else so we can actually have a functional kitchen <laughs> and actually use the kitchen instead of just having all these boxes up there, but I wanted to do that video today. Um, Alex worked from home. He had some meetings and stuff that he had to do, like Zoom meetings. And then um, he just laid down, I think it was like an hour and a half ago, to take a nap. And that was when I was getting ready to start making videos. And so, in all honesty, my plan today, I wasn't even planning on doing a drama video. I, uh, I had something I wanted to talk about in a drama video, but I was going to save it maybe for tomorrow or Monday. I think I'll probably take Sunday off. But I was... Um, trying to either save it for tomorrow or Monday and you know Fridays are pretty slow days anyway on YouTube a lot of people don't watch videos and so I was like I don't know that I want to like make this video today like maybe I'll just save it till tomorrow or Monday and um I sat out here and I was like doing like research into it and stuff and I thought I'm just gonna make the video now and um so my plan though when I got up was I was just gonna film the Peter Does Stuff video and a vlog and I was actually gonna bring out all the packages out here so Alex is upstairs and he's asleep with Lil Boo Radley and the the humidifier's going and the fan's going and so it's loud and it's, I mean it's not loud but it's like that's background noise and so I didn't want to turn the lights on and talk real loud and stuff while he's trying to nap. And so I was going to bring all the packages out here. And then I thought, oh, that's a lot of trouble. I'll just do, I'll just do it uh, some other time. Tomorrow he has something that he has to go to in the middle of the afternoon. So um, I may film it then. If I don't film it then, then I'll definitely film. I will definitely, well, God, Monday I have a dentist appointment in the middle of the afternoon. And then I have a, it's just my like regular, like, uh, quarterly cleaning that I have to get done and then I have therapy that evening which means I have to leave here about 5 15 or something like that and I'll probably get home from the dentist about two well that gives me a couple hours I'll, I'll definitely film that video on Monday if I don't film it tomorrow so the PO unboxing I can't wait another week and do it next I, if I say I'll do it next Thursday or, well Thursdays are my way in days if I say I'll do it next Friday then you know it just keeps on going and going and going but anyway so that's why I'm not doing that video today because I don't want to bring all the packages out here I was gonna try though I was gonna try but so yeah so I wasn't planning on um, filming any videos other than my vlog today and that Peter Dusta video and then I filmed the drama video it's kind of spur of the moment. And then afterwards, I had something I wanted to do a Peterisms video about yesterday. Somebody had left me a comment, I believe on my Peter Does Stuff um, video, my weight loss journey about their like high school reunion coming up and them wanting to like lose weight for their high school reunion. And so I kind of wanted to talk about my experience of my high school reunion and like how to go into that and whatever. A lot of what I've already talked about over here, but just in kind of like my thoughts and like going into high school reunions and thinking about like any kind of a reunion or event or anything like that. So that was what my Peter Rosen's video was about. And I really enjoyed making that. I was, that was kind of a fun video to make. And, um, and now I'm vlogging. So here I am. And tonight Alex is going out to dinner and then he also has a going away party that he's going to, but he said he probably shouldn't be home too late tonight. So I don't always be honest with you care how late he stays out tonight because my plan is to just watch true crime. Well, Southern hospitality reunion and then true crime. I'm so excited. I've got like, I don't even know what they are because my, um, 
my phone is inside. But I've been like going through all these different articles and different posts where people have talked about like what their favorite, true, like scariest true crime show and all this kind of stuff. So let me tell you about last night. Oh my God, last night we watched so much TV. So we, uh, I did not eat healthy last night. Alex was like, I'm going to order some Chinese food. Do you want anything? And he was like, I'm going to order some, well, Thai, he was going to order some Thai. And he got Pad Thai and um, fried rice. <clears throat> and I was like, you're gonna, if you're going to eat bad, like, I want to eat something bad too. And I just weighed myself in yesterday and I, I actually did not do that bad. And so it was like, okay, if I'm going to eat bad, then tonight's probably the night to eat bad. This is the sick rationalization of it, right? And I was like, if you're going to eat bad, tonight's probably the, the night to eat bad. And then just sit here and eat with Alex and whatever. So I ordered Cheesecake Factory last night. He actually asked me to order a piece of cheesecake. Because he was upstairs when he was ordering, like, putting his order in. And I was like, do you want any cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory? And he was like, no. And then he was like, yeah, actually, can I have a piece of the cookie dough cheesecake? Because he loves cookie dough anything. So it's called the Cookie Dough Lover's Cheesecake. So I got him that last night. So anyway, um, but yeah, so we sat down. Before, like, the food even came, we um, started watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It was the finale last night. We watched that. I was so tired by the end of watching all these shows last night. We literally banged out like four shows in a row. And um, I think I had like two cups of coffee at the end of it. And I was still falling asleep. So we watched Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That was like while we were eating. And then it was the finale. And then we watched The Real Housewives of Miami. And it was the finale. I think it was the finale this week. Yeah, it was the finale. I'm like thinking, did they show all the things at the end? Yeah, it was the finale, so the reunions were coming up. And then we watched Traders last night, because, like, right as we got... I think we had, like, ten minutes to wait until Traders came on, or maybe it was, like, right then that we got done with that show. I was like, do you want to watch Traders? And he was like, is it on yet? And I was like, yeah, it's on. So we watched Traders. Oh, my God, I was so pissed. I won't ruin it for anybody, but I was so pissed at how Traders ended last night. I was like, are you kidding me? This is what they're going to do to us? You'll know if you watch it if you're into Traders. So, anyway, we watched Traders... <clears throat> and then we watched Feud, Truman Capote versus the Swans, which is the new Ryan Murphy series that's out. Last night's episode was very boring. It was very, very boring. It was, he had this dream sequence um, where he, it was like, he had taken all these pills and he had this dream sequence where he felt like, writer James Baldwin came to visit him from France and was like encouraging him to write this book and it was kind of like how he came out of this like funk that he was in at the end of it and whatever. The show is very very well done. Um, I mean extremely well done. Um, the guy that was cast as Truman Capote has been in other Ryan Murphy uh, like series before and he's a phenomenal actor. He is I mean, it's uncanny how much he looks, acts, and sounds like Truman Capote. It is so bizarre. Um, Naomi Watts plays this woman babe in there. They're all, like, real people that... I mean, this is based on real stuff that happened. And basically what it's about is that... It's kind of like they, they marketed it as, like, the real house... The real, real housewives. So what it was was Truman Capote... He became friends with... Truman Capote, the writer, became friends that wrote, you know... Um, why can I never remember the the true crime novel? He like literally like invented true crime novels, right? Or true crime writing. Um, what was that book called? Like, uh, shoot, they talk about it constantly. I don't know why I can never remember this book. It was like one of the book, worst books I've ever read. It was so boring. We read it for a true crime book club. Um, In Cold Blood. He wrote In Cold Blood. Harper Lee actually that wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. She was his assistant on it. Harper Lee and he and Harper Lee were friends for years and years and years. I was actually looking this up last night because I knew that they had had a falling out, but I didn't remember why they had a falling out. If you've ever watched, so Truman Capote wrote In Cold Blood. He's written a lot of things, but he wrote In Cold Blood. He wrote Breakfast at Tiffany's, which they made into the movie with Audrey Hepburn. He wrote tons and tons of stuff, articles and magazines and things like that. But anyway. He and Harper Lee were like best friends. In fact, in To Kill a Mockingbird, sh she based the character Dill on Harper Lee because they knew each other since kids. And um, I knew they had a falling out, but I didn't really remember what the falling out was about. And I Google searched it last night. Apparently they had a falling out because 
she won the, I think the Nobel Prize for Literature for to Kill, to Kill a Mockingbird. And he was jealous of that. And he even came out and said that he wrote To Kill a Mockingbird at some point. That was like in some article that I read, something like that. But it was this huge jealousy thing that he was jealous of Harper Lee for getting all this attention off of To Kill a Mockingbird. And that was like ultimately what ended their friendship. Um, I'm sure there's more to it than that. There's like a whole documentary about their friendship and all that kind of stuff. I'm kind of in my true crime moment, so I don't know that I'll be watching that documentary tonight, but I will at some point. Um, I'm interested in anything to do with the life of Harper Lee and To Kill Mockingbird. Um, but anyway, so that was kind of the end of that. But the feud, well, I didn't realize it was part two. Part one was about Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. I think, not Joan Crawford, but maybe Joan, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and their front of me relationship that they had. That was part one. I think it was only like two episodes or something. It came out like in 2017. This is part two and it's called, that was called Feud. And then this is called Feud, the Swans, Truma Capote versus the Swans. And the Swans are this group of women that he's friends with that tell him all their secrets. And it's all these like, it's like the extremely wealthy, um, upper, you know, not upper middle class. I mean, upper, upper, <laughs> very wealthy. I mean, you would know these names, it's like Rockefellers and stuff like that. But the main four women that he's friends with, um, like, they're like his best friends and they tell him everything about their husband's cheating and all this kind of stuff. And so he writes this article and the article kind of exposes all of it. And then they become very upset with him. And it's this feud that occurs between the two of them, or between him and the, the swans, as he refers to them. Um, it's actually very well done. It's beautifully shot. The costumes, everything. Naomi Watts plays ba this woman, Babe. And, I mean, I know some of the people that they talk about, like, Chloe Savini plays CZ Guest. I know who CZ Guest is. I mean, I've read articles and stuff about her for years. Um, some of the other people that are in it, like, I've, I've known of them. The character that Molly Ringwald plays, I can't remember who it is right now, but it's, like, somebody famous. But she's not in it the whole time. Molly Ringwald. I love this kind of, like, resurgence of Molly Ringwald in the last couple years that she was in. Um, what's that show that Alex watches that's based on the comic strip? It's a town. Why can't I think of what it's called? With Archie and Betty. It starts with an R. Why can't I think of that? Alex, loves, he loves that show. But anyway, Molly Ringwald plays the mom, Archie's mom or somebody's mom in that. And so, <clears throat> but Molly Ringwald has had this resurgence in the last couple years. She's fantastic at everything she does. God, she still looks so good for her. I mean, she's like a couple years older than me, and I just think she looks fantastic. I love Molly Ringwald so much. I just think she's so, like, even like the, the John Hughes movies that she did back in the day, I just loved all of them, especially Pretty in Pink was probably my favorite. But how different she was and stuff. And she's still kind of like cool and different, you know, and lived in Paris. And I think she married like a jazz musician or something like that. Anyway, I don't know all that about her. But it's all these women that like are friends with Schumer Capote. And then he kind of like turns on them. And it's how they kind of like get vengeance on him. And it's a lot about forgiveness and stuff like that. It's very, very well done. Every episode up till now, I just was like on the edge of my seat. And it's, I mean, it's a drama. It's not like it's a thriller or anything like that. Last night's episode was so boring. It was so boring. Um, they never say that it's James Baldwin in the episode. And so he calls him Jimmy like twice. And I was like, <clears throat> is that James Baldwin? Is that supposed to be James Baldwin? Kind of sometimes the way that they pose this guy is like pictures that you've seen of James Baldwin. And so I was like, are they insinuating that that's James Baldwin? And so I Google searched it, and like the first thing that came up was in episode five of The Swans, James Baldwin, this imaginary uh, visit that he does with Truman Capote. So, um, but anyway, it was very boring last night. So then after that, Alex was so tired, he was like falling asleep on the couch. And I was like, are you going to bed? He's like, I'm going to bed. So I went upstairs and um, set my alarm for like an hour and a half. He actually was like, looked at TikToks for like five minutes and plugged in his phone. He was exhausted last night. And, um, so I laid down. I slept for like an hour. Boo Radley, he's, Boo Radley's doing much better today. He feels like, you can tell he feels much better. I think he was like sick to his stomach. I think his stomach hurt him all day yesterday is what's going on because he was like eating the weeds, which dogs do sometimes when they're sick. But late last night he got up <clears throat> and he was like in the bathroom and I could like hear him like, he was like, eh, eh, like he was going to vomit, but he didn't. And so, um, <clears throat> like I, you know, took him out, got him settled and all that kind of stuff. And 
he went right back to bed. But then I was up, so I was like, I don't know, this was like, I don't know what time it would have been. 12, 12 30, something like that. So I was like, okay, I am going to go downstairs and I can't remember, I had to finish something that I was watching. I finished something that I was watching and then I was like looking up all these true crime things. And I was like, oh, the first thing I looked up was missing person true crime documentaries. And like in the top five of all these things kept on coming up this one that I had never heard of before and it was called The Lost Boys of Buck Bucks County. I never heard of this documentary before. And I was like, what is this? And it kind of like, it was like the poster for it was like there are four pictures and then like this country road or something like that. And I was like, ooh, this looks like something that like I love these kind of, you know, true crime documentaries. I love anything that gets me scared. And so I went in and I looked and you had to like, Buy, I had to buy it. It was like two ninety nine to buy the episode. So I, it was like an episode from a show, but it wasn't a show. It just was a one standing documentary. It was like an hour and a half, hour and 26 minutes or something like that. So I watched it. I did not walk last night. My knee was hurting. My knee it com feels uh, completely, I wouldn't say 100, I was going to say 100% better. I would, I would say it feels about 95% better than it did um, yesterday and the day before. So Oh, that was what I did last night. Well, first of all, I came out here and I did my prayers and my meditations and all that kind of stuff. And then I made a cup of coffee. I have This cup of coffee is so cold. This is the uh, Bustello, Cafe Bustello coffee. Because I was like, I need a strong cup of coffee to get me started today. And I've been like sipping at it for like the last two hours and it's cold. But it's good. It's really strong. I like it. It's like espresso, I think. One of the things that drove me crazy about the Vanderpump Rules, if you go back and you watch a season with Raquel, the last season, 10, is that she does it several times, and it's when, and I don't know why this drives me crazy, it's like when people say Illinois with an S on the end of it, they say Illinois, I'm like, it's Illinois. That's like one of my biggest pet peeves, just so you know. And I know I mispronounce stuff all the time, right? But I think it's because I live so close to Illinois, but... Um, when, um, and the other thing is when people say Pacific instead of specific, that drives me crazy too. Like Pacific Ocean instead of specific, that's like one of my, that drives me crazy too. The other thing is when people say espresso instead of espresso. And I think it's because I, back in the day, I think I said it and somebody corrected me and I was like, is, is it espresso? And I'm like, this is like, in, like before I was 20 probably, right? Raquel when she is like asking people they want espresso martinis, like at Sir, she always says espresso. And I'm like, oh my God, this drives me crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> do you, do you, little things like that ever drive you crazy when people say certain things? It drives me crazy. I know that there's things I say that are wrong too that drive people crazy, so I get it, right? But anyway, um, so I sat out here, I, oh, my neighbors, I can see a shadow. He must be walking his dog. Or maybe getting the mail. I don't think the mail's come yet today. So anyway, um, it wasn't too cold last night. So I made a cup of coffee and I came back out here after I did my prayers and my meditations and my gratitude list and stuff like that. And I sat and I was like, okay, since you didn't walk tonight, <laughs> I gotta get back to the walking. Here I am. I just said I learned all these lessons. And I eat bad. I don't walk, right? But I had... Oh, he's walking his dog. <laughs> so... Um, but the food was so good from Cheesecake Factory last night. Oh my God, it was so good. So, um, and I woke up today and like weighed myself and I like literally had gained like two tenths of a pound. I was like, oh my God, like, but see if I do it two days in a row, then I'll gain a lot of weight. But I was kind of surprised. I was like, you didn't really, but I'm like keeping up with my waters and stuff like that. And I only ate like that one time. So that's probably part of it, but I don't know. Um, but we're back on it tonight. We're back, back on track tonight. So anyway, so I was like, well, you didn't walk and you want to listen to this audiobook. I was getting caught up. I was like three books behind my reading goal on Goodreads. And then when I was walking, I was like getting caught up. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be back on my reading goal and stuff like that again. Hello. How are you Good. How are you? Hey, Tiger. Was somebody else walking her yesterday? I thought I saw her with somebody else. <laughs> He's so nice. And, um... So crazy when you know all the, the dogs from the entire neighborhood, <laughs> outside the neighborhood and inside, you know, all their names and stuff. She's so sweet. Um, so I came out here and I made a cup of coffee and I listened to like 20 or 30 minutes of The Housemaid. I'm like real into it, but it's kind of like, a, I mean, it's the edge of your, 
seat thriller, but it's also like very predictable. And I said in a video, I think I said it on a vlog, I said, it's almost so predictable that there has to be some major twist that happens because it's literally like the best book of the year on Goodreads. Now the Goodreads thing, I just wanna put this in perspective. The Goodreads every year where they rank the best book it's the people that are on Goodreads that are voting. It's not like Goodreads decides that. Like, you go in and vote, right? It shows you. It shows under each book how many votes they got and stuff, right? And somebody commented on the vlog, and they said, The Housemaid is really predictable. And they said, and when you finish, something like, I don't know how they said it or what they said, but something like, when you finish it, you'll see how predictable it is or whatever, and that it's getting a lot of... It's getting a lot of notoriety or whatever, but it's really super predictable and, and you'll see that in the end or whatever. And when I read that comment, I was kind of like, they said something like a lot of these books that are predictable are getting like a lot of acclaim. I can't, I don't remember how the comment was said. I just want to say that. I mean, it was, a, it was just a nice comment about the book, right? But I remember when I read that and I was like, is this book going to be like real predictable like all of them? Because a lot of these books you read, they're real predictable that are like kind of of that genre. And so... By the way, Stacy, who is in the book club sometimes, and sometimes she's not. <laughs> hey, Stacy, how are you? She always gives me good book recommendations. She recommended me a, I can't think of her first name now, Jewel book, and I'd already looked it up, and I think I already bought it on Audible, because she had left a comment, like, have you read this book? So I just want to let you know that. But anyway, now, I'd like, that comment is, like, stuck in my head, and I'm like, yeah, this book is real predictable, and I think people are just like... It's like, what was the, the book that was written by the two authors, the two women, and I read it, and everybody thought this book was, like, the, the biggest thriller in the entire world, and I was just like, mm. It's one of the reasons why, like, Colleen Hoover, I just think that her books are problematic, first of all, but second of all, I mean, she kind of, like, I know, listen, my friend Tani Jean loves Colleen Hoover, okay, or Colleen, I guess she's not Colleen, she's Colleen Hoover. <laughs> I'm getting it off the drama stuff. But Tani loves Colleen Hoover. I know a lot of people that love Colleen Hoover. Love who you want to love, read who you want to read, okay? I feel like she glamorizes abusive relationships. And and I understand it for, like, the, the work of the art, but I don't know that I necessarily think it's necessary in certain of the situations. But the only book of hers I've read is Verity, and I was not that thrown down with it. I thought it was okay. But... I thought, like, maybe I need to try to get more into the Colleen, Ho Colleen, Colleen Hoover. Okay, here's my question to you out there. If you are a Colleen Hoover lover, where do I start? Like, what is the book I need to start on with Colleen Hoover? Like, because people ask me that all the time about, like, like uh, uh, Leanne, um, why can't I never think of her name? Leanne, who wrote Big Little Lies. Like, I hate that word brain fart, but I'm having brain farts left and right today. Leanne Moyerity. Leanne Moyerity. Somebody told me that Apples May Fall. I think it was Nikki told me this, that Apples May Fall is coming out. And it's coming out in March. And I think it's either on HBO Max or Peacock. And it's coming out as a series. I cannot wait. It's got Annette Benning in it. That book was really, really good. But people always ask me, like, with her. I mean, I haven't read all of her books. But they ask me, like, where to start. Like, people ask me that a lot with authors like Julie Murphy. Julie Murphy, start with Dumplin'. All of her books are fantastic. But people will ask me that, like, um... You know, like with Liam, where to start? Start with Big Little Lies. I mean, that'll get you hooked right away, you know? Um, I don't know where to start with Colleen Hoover. I read Verity, and it was okay. But then, like, I talked to people, and they're like, did you read Verity? It was so good. And I'm like, do you read mystery thrillers? Because I've read ten times better mystery thrillers, you know? Um, I feel like some of these books are cheats a little bit. I don't know, like, the surprise element of Verity was not, like, that big of a surprise element to me. It just, it, it was... I kind of saw it coming a little bit, maybe. I don't know. It was like the after that. Apparently, there's like newly released ending or something. <laughs> we were, I was talking to uh, my therapist about it one day. We were actually in a couples counseling session. It was at the very beginning. And he said something about he and his girlfriend read it together. And they had to read like they... Uh, I love when couples read books together. Can I just tell you that? <laughs> That's like something I think Alex would have done when we first got together, but like today he'd be like, that'd be a hard pass. <laughs> like if I said, let's get a book and like we'll each read a chapter to each other at night, he'd be like, we can watch a show. Do you want to watch a show? <laughs> so um, we did do that with, uh, we started doing that with the, the five love languages and then we each like read it ourselves. But um, I don't even know that I finished the five love languages. I think I did. But anyway, um, 
but we were talking about that. It's like romantic exercises and stuff. And he was saying that he and his girlfriend, like they read books, like they'll pick a book and then they'll like, you know, read like a couple of shit. I think that's kind of cute. I like that idea, right? And so I said, oh, well, like what's a book that you guys read together that you liked? And he was like, Verity by Colleen Hoover. And I was like, you liked Verity? And he was like, you didn't like it? I was like, I thought it was kind of cheesy at the end. And he was like, I mean, it's not cheesy, but it's just like predictable. And he's like, did you read the newly released ending? And I go, there's a newly released ending. He's like, yeah, you have to get this certain version of Verity. Like it's the hardback version or something. And it has like the different ending in it. And he told us what happened in the ending and everything like that. Alex could care less because he had never read the book. But anyway, if you're a Colleen Hoover out there, please in the comment section say, start with this book in this series. This is a series that you must read and this is the book that you need to start with. Because I like to read one of her books and give her a chance, but I need to know where. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, like, it's interesting to me, like, with James Patterson. Like, there's a lot of people that love James Patterson. I loved James Patterson back in the day. When I read Along Came a Spider and Kissed the Girls, Kissed the Girls was the first book that I read of his. I was just like, this is unbelievable. This is, like, one of the best thrillers that I've ever read in my entire life. I used to read voraciously. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, I still, like, well, not as much today with listening to audiobooks, but back in the day, I mean, I would go through, like, in my early days of being, like, sober and stuff like that, like, my, like, after, like, a year or two, I mean, I would come home from meetings and come home from work, and I would just, like, tear through hardback books. And I loved, I loved James Patterson. And so I started with, like, Kiss the Girls, and then Along Came a Spider, but I think it comes first before that, but I think I read it second. I read those all in order, like, the Alex Cross books. I read, like, the first 10 or 15 of them. The thing is, is that, like, after the fourth or fifth book of his... And those were not the first books of his. He did a book called, like, Black Friday, like, years ago, or it was called something Black Sunday or something. It was about, I don't know, Super Bowl or I don't know. But anyway, and there was, like, Machete something. He's written a couple books before that, but they didn't really get famous until Kiss the Girls, which they made with a movie with Morgan Freeman. I never saw Morgan Freeman as Alex Cross, so I think that kind of ruined it for me a little bit. But anyway... Um, I read those books, but by, like, the fifth or sixth one, that was when James Charles... James Charles... I'm sorry, James Patterson. I just talked about James Charles for an hour in a video. That's when James... Tra just did it. That's when James Patterson started getting super, super famous. And that was when he hired on, like, a team of people, you know? And, um... And so then, like, all of his books were written by this team, and it was this format that he had for writing a book. If you look, like, all of James Patterson's books are, like, the same, like, 291 pages, and each chapter has so many pages, and most books have the same amount of chapters. It's a format. It's all written, and somebody brings them an idea, and then they put it in a format, and that's how it's done, right? Maybe it's smart. It's a business idea. I can't really get through a James Patterson book these days to save my life. I really can't. They're so bad. I think the last one that was just, like, written kind of, like, by him and some nobody like some nobody author it's always like he tags on some nobody author that you've never heard of before it was called the zoo and it was like so bad and it was about these animals taking over new york city it was so horrible that was like the last one of his that i read read well that i read that was like written by himself but i did read i actually bought the one with he and i think it was dolly parton but i didn't read that but the one that i read and it was when we went to connecticut a couple years ago because Alex had a work conference there, and I read, or I listened to it on Audible, The President is Missing, and he wrote it with Bill Clinton. I think because he wrote it with Bill Clinton, he actually wrote it, because it is really good. It's like a return to the old James Patterson. Like, when I read that, I was like, oh, this is, like, you can tell this is, this is not somebody just sitting in a room writing this and putting James Patterson's name on it. Like, this is James Patterson. That one was really good. The President is Missing. Like, I really enjoyed that one. But, I mean, I've tried. The thing is, like, every time I see his book, like, I see those covers. Like, his covers are so famous, and they're so colorful, and they make you think. And they're so easy. They're, like, fast reads, right? They make you think, oh, my God, like, I should, like, get one this weekend. I should, like, go get one and just, like, sit out here and read it, you know, when it starts getting nicer. And give it another chance. But you always see, I, well, I shouldn't say you. I always see them in the stores, and I'm like, I mean, they're thick, but, like, it's so, like, a chapter is, like, a page and a half, right? And so you're like, oh, I can just tear through this book. This is going to be a great thriller. But then every one that I've gotten and I've tried in like like the last five or ten years, I've just been so let down when I've got them, you know? But the Colleen Hoover books are everywhere. So if somebody is out there that has read everything by Colleen Hoover and loves Colleen Hoover, let me know where to start. But it has to be a book that's going to really like, that you say, this is the book that, got, that sold it for me. And if it's Verity, then I'm done with Colleen Hoover. So anyway, um, Diana Jewell, is that her name? Kristen, Ho Kristen Hanna. Caroline's on the Kristen Hanna kick right now. Caroline loves all the Kristen Hanna books. Tanya's gone through those Kristen Hanna books. Tanya loves Karen Slaughter. That is like Tanya's like number one writer right now. She loves 
Karen Slaughter. But those books are like, so, I mean, they're like 18 to 21 hours on Audible. That is too long of a book for me. Oh, by the way, Monday I'll be announcing the books for the book clubs on my, well, I guess I've got all this stuff on Monday, so it might be Tuesday. Um, so yeah, so uh, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. So yeah, so that's, so last night I sat out here for like 20 or 30 minutes and I listened to The House Made. So I got some of that listened to. I have like two hours left of it to listen to. So tonight I am going to take a walk and I was at the 30 minute mark and didn't even realize it. Tonight when I get done vlogging, I'm going to um, go put on my walking shoes and I'm going to go walk for a little bit and uh, listen to The House Made. That's my plan for tonight. And then um, try to eat healthy and then watch some true crime. I've got like some true crime shows. Uh, already like saved, I have the screenshots and stuff. Okay, so last night I watched this, The Lost Boys of Bucks County, and it's Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and this happened in like 2017, I think, and it was these four boys that went missing basically between like three days, and they didn't really, they kind of knew each other, but they didn't really have any ties to each other, any close ties to each other, and then it's like this one other guy, and it's, it is scary. I was going to say girl. Girl, it is scary, okay? I mean, I had candles lit. I was looking out of my window at, like, in the street and stuff like that. I kept on thinking I heard things. I mean, I was scared last night, okay? Between reporting on the Baumeister thing and some of the emails that I've gotten, I'll just say, it's a little scary at night. Like, I'm glad that my husband's upstairs asleep. I'll just put that out there. Um, and he's not afraid of anything. So, um, so there's that, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll protect myself. Listen, <laughs> we're protected. I'll protect myself, you know? And I um, got the cameras and everything on there. So it's like, I'm looking out the window, but I'm like, okay, but I could just be looking at my phone on the cameras, right? <laughs> but anyway, so I got so scared last night watching it. And it's about these four boys, and I don't know where he's at, and where they're at. And then, and it's like the parents and the grandparents stories of like, whatever. And it's like, it's an hour and a half. If you don't mind spending the money, it's on Amazon. It's $2.99. It was a well-done documentary. I wouldn't say it was the best documentary that I ever watched, but it's an edge seat documentary. Like, you don't really know where it's going. And it's so kind of crazy. I mean, it's a closed case. Like, when you, like, finish a documentary, you know what happened and all this kind of stuff. It's conclusive. And I will say that, like, if you read the synopsis, it doesn't give anything away about who did it. Oh, this is how I found it last night. I was going to watch, it was mentioned in some of these articles, but I was going to watch Who Killed Garrett Phillips. I started that, like, two years ago, and I don't, I never finished it. I actually looked. It's on Hulu or something. And I looked, and I'm, like, halfway through it, of the first episode. There's only two episodes. So I never finished that. So I might finish that tonight. I got the Southern Hospitality Reunion. But I was looking up these articles of, like, the scariest true crime documentaries out there. And one that kept on coming up. Okay, so something that's changed in me in, like, the last two months, because I've started watching all these Harlan Coben shows is, that for a very, very long time, and hey, listen, this is no shade at anybody from the UK, okay? But when I would watch, like, British uh, true crime, like, or British thrillers and things like that, it was so hard for me. Like, <clears throat> I would either have to have the subtitles on or I would have to, like, rewind it 50 times because they spoke so fast and I was like, I couldn't understand what they were saying. Now my ear is trained for it because I've been watching all these Harlan Coben shows and these other thrillers that I can totally hear what, I uh, totally understand, like, everything that they're saying, right? So my ear's kind of trained for it. So now it's kind of opened this whole new thing for me of all of these, like, UK, like, thrillers and true crime documentaries. Well... This one was recommended to me. Now, I had kind of, or kept on coming up in this article, and I had heard about it. I think I'd even watched a trailer for it one time. But I was like, no, this is like, I'm not, I'm really interested in like the middle America true crime, okay? But now that I'm watching these UK thrillers, I'm very interested in the UK true crime and thrillers and stuff, stuff which is interesting because I've had a lot that have been recommended to me through the years, and I just never watched them. So, um... By the way, one documentary that people keep on, like, I keep on seeing on lists is Cropsy, and it's about missing kids. Has anybody ever recommended it, or has anybody ever seen it, and would you recommend it? It came up on the scariest list. So this one came up, and it was about, it's called Sophie. It's on Netflix. It's called Sophie, and it's, like, a, a missing French woman in West Cork, Ireland. Um... And so I like went in and I looked at the trailer. Well, the trailer is very professionally done. Like, I mean, some of these true crime things look very amateurish, you know, just like an episode off of like Dateline or something. But I was watching the trailer and the trailer looked so professional. And I was like, oh, this is like a legit, legit documentary, right? 
And I've heard about this West Coast court case for years. Like, I think uh, Audible did like a whole original podcast or thing about it. And then there was like another documentary. And I'm like, is this the same case? And so I go in and I start watching it. It is so good, you guys. It is so good. Um, it's three episodes, and it's about this French woman, and in 1996, she had a house in West Cork, Ireland, and this area of Ireland is gorgeous. It reminds me of that, actually I made a decision last night too, by the way, this is a tangent moment, but I was watching, like they were talking about Jimmy Kimmel, it was an advert, we were watching something, it was Jimmy Kimmel was hosting the Oscars. I'll watch probably the Oscars this year, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not watching the movies. I just made that decision last night. I'm not interested in watching these movies. I'm not gonna watch 10 movies that I don't wanna see just to get ready for the Oscars this year. I'm not really that interested in most of the movies um, that were nominated this year. There's a few movies that I feel like should have been nominated and got dissed by the Oscar, and and I'm by the Oscars, by the Academy, and I'm just like, I don't know. So I don't know if I'll watch it, but we'll, we'll see. I'm not even really that into the Oscars this year, which is weird, because usually, the only thing I'm kind of interested in is to see how the holdovers do, and I want that one woman from the holdovers to win. But, so that was kind of a decision that I made last night. I was like, I'm like a, a week and a half away from the Oscars. I don't think I, I would have to literally watch a movie a night, and I don't feel like doing that, so. But anyway, so it's about this woman, and she's from France, and she has a house in West Cork, Ireland. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. This town that it takes place in reminds me very much of that movie that was up for an Academy Award, last, I think it was last year, with Colin, what's his name? Is it Colin Farrell? Is that his name? And that other guy, it was so well done. And, um, what was it, the, why well, can't I remember what that was called? But you guys know what I'm talking about? It was beautifully shot. This documentary is just as beautifully shot. And it takes place in this part of, like, this very small southern, is it South Cork, maybe? West Cork? I don't know, this very small town. It's called, it looks like Shoal, C, it's S-C-H-U-L-L, -L, but it's pronounced Skull, Skull, Ireland. And so anyway, it's with this woman, and she's from France, and it's Christmas, and she's visiting there. She has a house in this Skull, Ireland, this real small town. And so she's visiting there, and um, she's murdered. And it's the case, how it, like, unfolds. And I'm two episodes into it. I got into the second episode. That was when I was really looking out windows last night, making coffee and stuff like that. I got so scared, you guys, last night that finally I was like, and this never happens to me. I don't even know what it was about the documentary, because... There really isn't anything that, that is that scary about the documentary. But there was, some, I was just like, okay, it's time for you to get to bed and just be cozy in bed. Cause this is like, you're getting too scared, right? Like I'm scared, like this is, this is too much. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed. So I went to bed. So I've got the final episode of that series. And then I've got like three or four other series that I wanna watch, true crime series. So tonight, is true crime series. And then tomorrow, Alex, during the day, has something that he's gonna do, so I might film some videos tomorrow, but then true crime tomorrow. We also have RuPaul's Drag Race to watch, because that comes out tonight, so we'll probably watch that tomorrow night. He has no plans tomorrow night. So tomorrow night and Sunday will just be Alex, Peter, and Boo Radley, time of the century. Look, I just wrote that song. Your mama doesn't write a song. She's a damn good writer. <laughs> she doesn't say damn, I don't think, and coal miner's daughter. I was born to be a coal miner's daughter. I just had this, while I was thinking about that, I said this thought, I was like, would your mom be disappointed in you that you're not watching the movies for the Oscars? <laughs> Why is that something I would even think about? My mom, she loved movies. See, I feel like I should uh, watch the movies, because if I don't watch them for the Oscars, like Oppenheimer, I'll never watch them. And I've heard some of these movies are fantastic. I just don't have any desire to. They all are so like, they all look so like dark and depressing and sad and stuff. I'm just like, oh, I don't wanna watch these movies this year. I wanna watch true crime. I also have Stay Close to go back to. And then that other British one that is about, apparently somebody sent me, a couple people sent this to me, I think. This master class that Harlan Coben is like teaching that you can write a thriller. <laughs> I'm not paying for it, but, <gasps> but I did come up with this new, I got three book ideas going on at the same time, okay? Three, well, the Christmas book and then three other books. Two cozy, two, two cozy mysteries and then the book that I came up with last night, which is kind of a cozy mystery, but not really. So I don't know uh, which one I'm gonna like. I've been like outlining these and whatever and like working on them and writing some stuff up and wrote that like you know the other night. 
but or that was like two weeks ago but I have got like some good ideas so I just need to sit down and do it part of it is I need a I need to get a new computer um, so the computer that I've had I've had for like four or five years I mean I use it every day it's like it's very slow at this point point. and there was I was doing a vlog I don't know if you guys will remember this but I was doing a vlog or review or something and something squirted out it's like the only button that it affects is my space bar on my computer and I've tried to clean it I've gone in with like computer cleaner and stuff and tried to clean it it will not it's like it sticks now and so I have to like hit it really hard to get a space um and so I'm like, you know what? Like, I've had this computer for four or five years. It's very slow anymore. Um, and I know it's, I do all the updates and all that kind of stuff, but I was just like, it's time to get a new computer. I just like been putting it off because I haven't wanted to invest in a new computer, but it's time for me to get a new laptop. So I think I'm going to try to wait until like April to get a new laptop. I don't want to like rush right out and get it. Um, so I think I'm going to try to wait. And then in the spring, if I can sit out here and stuff, because I never sat out here. Like, I mean, I've written a little bit out here, but not like sat and said like, okay, I'm going to write a chapter tonight. When it starts getting warmer, I can sit out here and I can write. Like, I'm really excited about that. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of my plan. But I came up with this whole like book idea last night and took like, well, I have my phone out here, but I took like notes for this new book idea and all this kind of stuff. It's about this woman. Well, I won't even tell you the ideas. Because if I tell you that, it'll never happen. So there's no point in even telling it. It'll probably just be an idea that'll be on my notes app. And then three years from now, I'll be like, what was this idea that you were coming up with? <laughs> it's a good idea, though. I even came up with names and everything. So anyway, uh, I think I like the idea of coming up with books more than I like the idea of actually sitting down and writing books. That's why I just need to be in a room with people and be like, this is the thriller that we need. Can, okay, so this is what's going to happen. You guys write it out, and then we're going to put it into like a Netflix series. Is there a job like that? Because that, that would be a good job for me. It's just coming up with ideas. I come up with ideas better than I come follow come up with a follow through, you know? Okay. Well, on that note, I'm going to go inside and hang out with my husband a little bit before he leaves. And true crime night. I'm so excited. So anyway, short outro tonight. Hope you guys are having a magically amazing Friday. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I hope that you guys are having a fantastic beginning to your weekend. Be kind to one another. Love one another. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself more. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve to love yourself. You're worth it. Each and every one of you out there is worth it. And I love you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.